A long-standing wish to educate school children about the climate challenges facing our Great Marsh, the largest salt marsh in New England, with over 20,000 acres of marsh, barrier beach, and tidal rivers extending across Massachusetts North Shore from Gloucester to Salisbury, led to a beautiful Great Marsh project of science and art, climate change, and climate adaptations. The wish began with a combined science, art, and education project on view outside of the Parker River National Wildlife Refuge called the Once and Future Salt Marsh. Silk painter Susan Quaitman and graphic designer Les Bartlett collaborated with scientists Ann Giblin and Jane Tucker of the Marine Biological Laboratory, Mass Audubon scientist Robert Buxbaum, as well as Nancy Pau, scientist at the refuge, to present climate change issues facing both established and newcomer marsh critters, the salt marsh sparrow, smelt, and fiddler crab. Beautiful panels were created and installed for the mostly adult public to enjoy on the refuge. In order to engage young people, project artists and scientists turned their focus to working with the River Valley Charter School. The big goal is to create a pilot project for the artworks and this video to inspire schools near the Great Marsh, local science and art teachers, to teach their students about the effects of climate change on the Great Marsh and how this knowledge can encourage students to become Great Marsh advocates using the powerful tools of science and art. I didn't really appreciate how much was going on inside of the marsh, the different systems, the carbon storage, the biodiversity inside of the marsh. I didn't really know that until I learned about it. Seventh and eighth grade students at the River Valley Charter School in Newburyport, Massachusetts, studied the ecosystem and impacts of climate change on the Great Marsh. The students conducted experiments with scientists, learned about the marsh from their teacher in the classroom, and researched the marsh on their own to create a group art project. They made a four-panel mural displaying the marsh ecosystem and included the human impacts on the marsh and the wildlife that inhabits the marsh. Their science teacher, Rebecca Schwer, and art teacher, Lucinda Cathcart, organized this art science project. This whole process is really important for the kids. I think every time I do a project like this, where I give students multiple ways to express their understanding, the kids just shine. So Rebecca and I work very well together on combined science and art projects because she brings years of experience as a teacher to the project. She makes it so accessible for all the students and I luckily get to step in and bring in the kind of creative energy. Together we heighten their enthusiasm and the end product is exciting for all of us. Everywhere students go, they see the salt marsh where they live. This year it made a lot of sense to use the salt marsh in connection with climate change is because we learned a lot about tides. And the place that is most affected by tides in our area is the salt marsh. The students' research for this mural went beyond the classroom. They took field trips into the marsh at the nearby Parker River National Wildlife Refuge to study the health of the Great Marsh with scientists. The students at the school were learning about sea level rise and climate change. And what we did was we gave them a description of what happens to a marsh because of sea level rise and then techniques that we use to help remediate that because we really want to have a Goldilocks effect on the marsh, so not too wet, not too dry. We took them to a site that was too wet first, and we had them do the same thing for the too dry site. And at every 10 meters is where they did the percent cover, test the salinity, and the depth of any pools that were in the area. We learned a lot about the scientists and how they kind of add up to these changes. One of them is we went out to the marsh and we learned how they are using these runnels to drain the wetter parts of the marsh and what tools they use is a big thing, um, like their sipper to check the groundwater and their transects, which are the big lengths that they use um, to measure the plant life and everything. But when you actually look at what the scientists do, it's interesting, to say the least. I am 
an artist who paints on silk. To inspire the students, Susan Quaitman, an environmental artist, gave a presentation to the class on how she has interpreted the science of climate change at the Salt Marsh in her artwork. Her project, the Once and Future Salt Marsh, on display at the refuge in Newburyport includes the Salt Marsh Sparrow, Smelt, and Fiddler Crab. Susan wanted to inspire the students to create their own artistic interpretations of the science of the salt marsh at the Parker River Refuge and to illustrate what is happening to the marsh as a result of climate change and how the students could become future stewards of the marsh. As part of this project and inspired by the students and teachers at the River Valley Charter School, Susan created these silk artworks. They will be shown with the students' panels at Greenbelt, the Parker River Wildlife Refuge, and other venues on the North Shore. I've learned that when people learn about science through art, it gets them in the heart and the gut. Each of the four panels depicts a different theme that the students brainstormed in the classroom. They are the salt marsh past, present, good future, bad future, healthy versus unhealthy salt marsh, polluted marsh, and biodiversity and habitat loss. On each panel, four sets of students had an area of the marsh to display their artwork. The areas are the sky, the grasses above the marsh, ground level, and below the marsh. Each student wrote an artist statement about their contribution to the mural. Their artist statements and their science statements are is incredibly strong and impactful, as well as the pieces that they created for the murals. I'm doing the below ground area. And so what my group has decided to do was split our area in half. And one side would be unhealthy and one side would be healthy. And I'm working on the unhealthy side. So I did kind of black dirt that I used felting for using some glitter glue paint for the oil spills and I'm gonna do unhealthy roots in there and invasive species of crab. I'm working on the unideal future and I'm specifically working in the sky with climate change and I have like really smoggy clouds with like carbon trapping in sunlight representing heating up the earth. I'm doing the great blue hyan because it's one of the species that it lives in the marsh and it's also an experience its habitat loss. When the marsh is too dry to wet, then it affects it a lot because then it either won't be able to find its food or it won't be able to find the right place to nest. I'm doing a section of the below marsh and it's primarily where like, crabs and clams live, but it's also where roots are there to decompose and create the peat. The roots structure there helps keep the marsh together so that it doesn't erode. I'm making a green crab because this it's not done yet, but I'm making green crab because they're invasive species. They like um, eat the other animals. In our below marsh section, we decided we wanted to focus on um, pollution and with our biggest subject, the biodiversity loss and the theme for doing some rainbow smelt, we used broken up CDs. With the different pieces of broken CDs, we were able to kind of fiddle with them and connect them to create a fish-like creature. A popular theme with the students was the plight of the salt marsh sparrow, a species that is threatened by climate change. I am making a salt marsh sparrow because they are going extinct. The birds are kind of our centerpiece of the our part of the marsh. We want to put them surrounded by the marsh and the grasses and then how the water level is kind of rising up and threatening them. It has to time its um, like nesting cycle in between the moon phases because the bird lays the eggs in like the low marsh. But if these storm surges keep on happening, it will crush the eggs and that species could go extinct. But I hope that like in the good future, like if we continue this marsh restoration, that like they can come back. Teaching the students about climate change helped them better understand climate change and how they can take action. Giving the students like this opportunity, especially in this first panel over here, 
thinking about two possible futures, right? Um, and giving them the opportunity to express, you know, what they're scared of, but also that there is this possibility of, of having a future where we are adopt, adapting and adjusting, but also taking care of our planet. What's really important uh, for, for our, our children um, and for the next generations to learn about what's happening with climate change, because this is, you know, this is the only world we live in. Um, and the more that they, they're out here experiencing nature and kind of understanding what, it, what impacts we have had as humans, they are, are the next voices, the next scientists that come up, the next political leaders in order to help slow this, the, the climate change and help kind of protect some of these very vulnerable ecosystems. I didn't know that so much was going wrong with the marshes. So I guess it makes me want to help out more. I've learned about what we do that we don't even mean to do that can impact the environment, like carbon dioxide. There's too much carbon dioxide in the air, um, and humans are just making more of it. I figured out how important salt marsh is in our area. This project opened my eyes to a lot of possibilities on how to help and how to spread awareness. Before this, um, I didn't really like care as much about the salt marshes, um, but now I feel like they're like I kind of like care more to like take care of them. This is way bigger than you really would think, in that a lot of a lot of animals and people are being affected by this changes in the marsh. It's a, a real matter of we need to do change right now. We need to stop it before it gets too bad in the future where we can't do anything. The artwork that we really can do and produce is very, very much powerful. And it's being created by people like me, like eighth graders, seventh years. We're all putting it together to create a little section in this giant mural that will be placed everywhere to share our hopes with people.